is your first time tuning in, a lot of you are probably up in the arms and not exactly sure exactly how you're supposed to approach the speaking question for. You know, a lot of you do not have that coherence at the beginning. A lot of you do not have the, the first and the second and using just different discourse markers to at least guide you. See, there's a common misconception that we absolutely need discourse markers in regards to the speaking, but that's not necessarily true. It's more important for the writing because AI, that's probably the number two thing that the AI tech grades you in, in terms of your writing. However, when it comes to speaking, it's totally different, okay? That's only one of the 15 categories and the impact is very low. Hell, you could have literally probably a 15 to 30 out of 100 in your discourse coherent markers and you'll still be able to get a pretty damn good score. You can get as high as a 27 in some instances. So, but you don't wanna jeopardize that, all right? Make things easy, all right? And so at the very beginning, it's always about the lecture is about the two something, okay? And then first, and then there's second. That just gives you a little bit of guidance. I'm going to be breaking down everything right after this to see exactly how you can put this together. Again, people, I've already talked to you about the content. All right, the content does not matter. I just need you to write and write and write. Got it? So with that being said, Let's dive in and see what this audio is going to be about. Three, two, one. How the zebra got its iconic black and white stripes is one of evolution's most famous just so stories. That is, it's very easy to dream up theories to explain it, but a whole lot harder to prove them. In recent years, scientists have whittled down the multitude of hypotheses to two they feel stand up to scrutiny better than the rest. We'll call these two ideas the thermoregulation hypothesis and the pest control hypothesis. First up, the thermoregulation hypothesis. The thinking here is that while the hot African sun shines overhead, a zebra's alternating stripe pattern simultaneously absorbs and reflects wavelengths of light. When the faster air currents of the black stripes meet those of the white, this may produce small convection currents, or, to put it more simply, air swirls. These air swirls may help with the evaporation of sweat and the dissipation of body heat. Still, zebras do not appear to have lower general body temperatures than non-striped mammals occupying the same habitat. It is for this reason that some researchers remain unconvinced by the thermoregulation hypothesis. Instead, these scientists tend to prefer the pest control hypothesis. Sub-Saharan Africa has the highest concentration of both tsetse and horseflies in the world. These are nasty biting insects that can cause serious disease in both humans and animals alike. Some researchers have conducted studies in which they monitored the behavior of these flying parasites around both zebras and their non-striped horsey relatives. And what did they find? Well, it turns out these pests landed with much less frequency on the striped flanks of the zebra than on those of their non-striped counterparts. Something about this stripey patterning appears to mess with the insect's internal navigation system. Unfortunately, the underlying mechanisms of this ingenious deterrent system are still a complete mystery to us. Oh boy, that was hard. To be honest with you, I never had something so ridiculously hard before, so I was kind of just navigating myself. Okay, just like these flies navigate, I was navigating myself in terms of like, like producing, obviously, the words needed.